Hey, you guys. Uh, I am on my way home. I am stuck in traffic, and I decided to do Bible study right now, so bear with me. I want to talk about a scripture that so many of us, we always repeat. Let me tell you what the scripture is as I'm standing here <clears throat> at the traffic light. And if anybody stopped by and watched this video, thank you for joining and thank you for listening. But the scripture comes from um, Proverbs 25, 21, 22. It says, if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. 22 says, for, for you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. And the north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. Okay, that's Proverbs 25. 21 and 22. But the scripture that I actually want to talk about, hi James, thanks for joining. Hi Lorenzo. The scripture I want to talk about while I am stuck in traffic right now is the uh, scripture in John. And I've been reading John for maybe about two, three weeks, and I've been thinking about the part where it talks about Jesus is standing on shore and he's cooking fish on coals of fire and that always puzzled me why would Jesus be cooking fish and while Peter and the disciples was out to the sea all night long fishing but they didn't catch anything but it always puzzled me and it also also puzzled me about the scripture in Proverbs where it talks about uh, give your your enemy food and water to drink and we reap coals a fire on their head and it just did not make sense because Jesus was doing the same thing with the fish so I did a little bit more just thinking about it and 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 researching and uh, and I'm gonna take it from John because it'll bring it the, the scripture in Proverbs 25 will, will have a more understanding when we read that when we understand what Jesus is doing because a lot of times when we can't figure out a scripture because we want to make sure that the word of God is about love and is not about uh, hateful things because Jesus is love. And because this is Valentine's, I just thought maybe this would be a great time to share some enlightenment about this scripture. But in John, John 21, uh, John 21, 3 says, I am, Peter is talking, you know. Let me tell you a little bit about Peter, the reason why he's going fishing. During the time that Jesus was being crucified, he denied Jesus Christ three times. And, and when he denied him, and do you remember when he denied him, the, the, um, the, I think the chicken or whatever, the crow, it, it made a noise like three times. So it denied him. So at that time, Pete, at the time, Peter, Simon Peter, lost his garment because he denied Christ. He did it three times. He, he said, I didn't know this man. I didn't know this man. I didn't know this man. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of understanding as to why Peter is back doing something that he was delivered from when Jesus came and he walked with him for three and a half years. So at the time now, Jesus has already been crucified. This is his third time appearing to the disciples. And John, it talks about Peter apparently lost his garment. He's like, oh, I don't know what to do now, you know. And uh, so, to me, I'm ab living that maybe people, Peter was feeling as maybe I don't have a career. Even though Jesus said, upon this rock, upon this revelation, I shall build my church. Because he told the Lord at the time, uh, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Well, at the time, now Jesus and, no, Peter now is at the Sea of Galilee. And he's frustrated. And so he says in 3, John 21, 3, he says, I am going out to fish. Simon Peter told them, the other disciples, and the other disciples said, well, I'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. They caught not one ounce of fish. And that puzzled me. You know, remember that he denied Christ three times. Lost his garment, so he went back doing his old job. He was no longer now fisherman, fisherman of men. He was back doing fisherman of the sea. You know, sometimes we get frustrated and we just go back to what we normally 
we used to, we have the gifting to do. Even though the Lord has already delivered us from something of old, we will go back because we think in the future it's not prospering like it should be. So this is what Peter did. He went back fishing and all night long and back in the day, fishing at night, if anybody know how to fish, fishing at night and early in the morning is the best time to fish, to gather fish. Well, they did that. This is some, This was their profession. They had a business doing that. So they were very, they were an uh, expert at fishing. They caught nothing. And John, the next morning, it says in four, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not recognize that it was Jesus. Think about it. They did not recognize the Lord on the shore. First of all, Jesus is standing on the shore. And it says, he called out to them, friends, have, he says, friends, haven't you any fish? And they answered, no. Okay. So they didn't catch not one thing going back to something that the Lord didn't tell him to go back. So when John, when John said, it is the Lord, Peter, he placed his garment back onto himself, which that represents the garment of righteousness. He put it back on and he dived into the sea and he swam to the shore to the Lord. <laughs> so now Peter decided, oh, I'm putting back on this garment and I'm going to dive in, which is like a type of baptism. And then he presented himself to the Lord. And it says, when basically when Peter got to the shore where Jesus was, when he landed, he says, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. That's the part that caught my attention that made me go back to Proverbs 20, 25, which says, give your enemy food and something to drink. It'll burn coals on that fire. Normally people will perceive that scripture as, Oh, now my enemies, you know, I want something terrible to happen to them. I'm going to burn coals on their fire. But this is not what the Lord is talking about. Okay. The reason why Jesus was actually burning, well, cooking fish on a burning of coals is because Peter had lost his position, which made it an enemy unto the Lord. Not an enemy of a hateful enemy, but an enemy unto the Lord, because now we have the Christ, the resurrection Christ. So there's two, there's two gospel going, there's two um, uh, relationships right now that's happening in the Bible between Jesus and Peter. We have the law, which is the Old Testament, and then with Jesus being resurrected, we have the New Testament. So that will make it an enemy unto the Lord, because he's no longer part of the law. He's part of now grace. And so when the, the, the example of Jesus now cooking fish on coals, the fish represents us, you know, uh, we're considered like the fish and he was cooking it. And so the burning coals, what basically what that means is that he was restoring, uh, Peter. It was an example of what he was about to do for Peter. Uh, burning the coals representing, I need to put the fire back into Peter, giving them that anointing back to him, bringing life back to him. That's why the Lord, uh, in, in the scripture, Proverbs 25, he's, uh, Solomon is talking about giving our enemy something to eat because they have fallen from grace. And because we are children of the Lord, we have to give when people fall from grace, they put themselves like Peter did in the place of the law. And we all, once you've been saved and have given your life to Christ, we're now part of the kingdom of God, which is the grace part. We're no longer part of the law. And, uh, and that is what he was explaining to us in John for the scripture in Proverbs 25. And so basically, Jesus is on the shore cooking breakfast for his disciple and Peter, and uh, and the representation, because G Jesus is so extraordinary in his tactics of what he's, what he's going to do, and so he's given an example to us, if you dig into the word of what he was about to do for, for Peter, he was cooking that fish, and it was on the, uh, the coals of fire, 
which stated that I'm getting ready to restore Peter so he can go ahead and begin building the church in which I have commanded him to do. And uh, that's what that basically was doing. Because later on, when Peter showed up on shore, Jesus set him down. And Jesus asked him three times. He says, um, but before he sat down with uh, Peter, he told, he told the other disciples, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Because at the time, when they didn't catch anything, Jesus told them, well did you catch anything? And they said, no. And Jesus told them to, to send the net on the right side of the boat. And they caught 153 fish, which it was a lot. So it took all the disciples plus Peter to gather in large fish. But later on, after Peter had swam to the shore and sat down and ate breakfast with Jesus, Jesus had to restore him. Jesus had to breathe life back into him. Jesus had to give him that anointing back that he lost when he denied him. Uh, Peter, very interesting, he put back his garment on and he dived into the water, which was a type of baptism, and he stand there facing the Lord. And the Lord asked him, uh, after they ate breakfast and everything, and he says, Simon Peter, you know, once he was in Grace Park, his name was Peter. But when he fell from grace, he was now Simon Peter. And the Lord said to Simon Peter, he says, do you love me more than these? He says, do you love me more than these, the fish? Those are, that is the, the, the blessings of the Lord uh, that he had gave his disciples. He says, do you love me more than these? You know, just one moment. There's an accident on the road. <laughs> But anyway, so he asked Peter, and he says, really? He says to Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And then, he, and then the Lord goes in, and he said, hold on. And then he, after he said that, and then the Lord says, feed my sheep. Okay, you guys. He says, feed my sheep. That was the first time. And then the Lord turned around and said to Peter, he says to Peter again, he says, he says, Simon Peter, he says, do you love me? And Simon Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He says, take care of my sheep. Okay. So he's restoring him. He's giving him back that anointing. And then the Lord said the third time, Simon Peter, do you love me? And Peter was hurt by this time. You know, can you imagine the Lord asking you three times, do you love me? And you saying, yes, Lord. So Peter is hurt at the third time that the Lord asked him. And, and Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep. Very truly, I, he says, very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and someone else will dress you. And he goes on and talk about that. So that is pretty much what I want to talk about today, about that burning of coals in Proverbs 25. Everybody thinking that is, uh, they want the enemy to be terrorized by the Lord, want the enemy to be rebuked by the Lord, but that's not what Proverbs 25 is talking about. Uh, Proverbs 25 is really uh, is connected with John, with Jesus and John in 21 by restoring your enemy because they have fell from grace. They become your enemy because they have fallen from grace, which they're no longer connected to. You got to bring them back up to where you are. And the Lord wants us to walk in love. He, he clearly tell us that was the commandment, walk in love. If you fulfill the love of God, then all the Ten Commandments is already filled. Uh, that is law. So the love, the love thing fulfills the law. Okay? So basically, burning coals, y'all, if you hear anybody talk about, oh, I, I'm going to just give my enemy and be nice to my enemy because I won't burn coals over their head. 
I need y'all to stand up and say, that's not what that scripture means. That scripture means I need to bring you back into the grace and the, into the kingdom, into the grace walk. And so that you will be under the covering of the Lord in love and not under the legalistic part of the law. So basically that is about love and about um, restoring, uh, bringing, giving life back, giving life.